Conlon Mustaine. I'm a general and colorectal surgeon at UAMS. One of the most important reasons to do screening colonoscopies is to identify precancerous lesions within the colon that can be removed or treated that may reduce the patient's risk of developing colorectal cancer. The most common of these are colorectal polyps. Polyps are growths that occur on the wall of the colon. Uh, they grow from the mucosa of the colon, which is uh, analogous to the carpet. Uh, the analogy I use for my patients a lot of times is that the lining of your colon and rectum is kind of like a carpet. The mucosa, or the lining that we see, is like the carpet. But underneath that, there's a carpet mat, and there's floorboards, and there's a foundation, which are the different layers of the colon wall. Polyps grow from a carpet, essentially. Um, you know, they're a lump or a bump in the carpet. With time, the cells that make up that polyp uh, or the carpet fibers become more abnormal. Those cells develop mutations that allow them to change and to grow faster than the mucosa around them. And they become larger and they develop new abilities which may allow those cells to start to invade into the wall. So you start to find carpet fibers living in the carpet mat or in the floorboards. And that invasion is the distinction between a polyp and a cancer. Uh, so it's very common that patients are seen by a gastroenterologist, they have a colonoscopy, there's a large polyp, and the, the endoscopist can't tell from looking at it whether it's just a polyp or whether it's a cancer. Uh, and that's oftentimes difficult to determine. Biopsies can help. Uh, biopsies take a sample you know, of the polyp itself, and then the pathologist will look at it under the microscope, uh, and they'll examine the cells. If the cells look fairly innocent, they may call it a regular polyp. If the cells look like cancer, they may call it a polyp with high-grade dysplasia. Uh, dysplasia just means that the cells are starting to change and they look less like the, the cells that they started as. When dysplastic cells or high-grade dysplasia are found invading into the wall of the colon, that's the definition of a cancer. And sometimes we can't tell just by endoscopy and small biopsies whether or not a polyp is invasive. Um, sometimes we have to remove the entire polyp, um, sometimes with uh, endoscopy through the colonoscope, sometimes through surgery in order to make that determination. Uh, we try to do everything we can before subjecting patients to a big surgery to make the distinction between polyps with dysplasia or cancer, uh, but sometimes we're unable to do that. Sometimes we may remove polyps with a colonoscopy and then find out after the fact that the pathologist looks at it and that there was cells that were invasive and it was in fact a cancer. Uh, in most cases, if a polyp is invasive or if it is a cancer, uh, a larger surgery is needed in order to remove some of the lymph nodes that drain that section of colon and make sure that the cancer hasn't spread anywhere else because that will influence whether or not the patient needs any additional chemotherapy. Every patient we treat at UAMS is an individual and every condition is uh, distinct uh, for that particular patient. Um, obviously, patients fall into broad categories, colon cancer, rectal cancer, diverticulitis, uh, but each case is different. And uh, I think the judgment um, is probably as, you know, my judgment I think is as important as my surgical skill in taking care of those patients. Um, there are a number of different options um, uh, for just about every condition uh, that we treat. And it requires uh, careful thought and attention to detail in order to determine the right treatment for the, for the right patient. Mm -hmm.